thank you for uh, sacrificing some of your sleeping hours and coming with us tonight. And you know, regardless of whether whether you're out here on TV or not, you're you find great enjoyment praying for people, don't you? I do. I like that. And uh, you know well what it is for God to come to your rescue in your life and to help you, don't you? Many times, many times, many, many times. And uh, I'm just grateful to God because um, you can grow up in church. And I grew up uh, in church, in the Church of God in Christ. I grew up going to Sunday school and uh, going to church and young people's YPWW. And uh, I didn't know all of that word that was being put in me was going to surface in me. And uh, I would really like to encourage parents, take your children to Sunday school. Take them, definitely take them to Sunday school. Read them the word of God. Get the word of God down in them because the word of God is alive. It's a live word. And uh, it really, it really strengthens you, helps you in school. I know they used to say, even when I didn't know Jesus as my Savior, they take us and, and say, go into the prayer line and have them pray for you. You know, prayer would never hurt you. And I'm telling you, prayer covered a whole lot in my life. But when I came to know Jesus, I came to know Jesus. The Lord came into my life when I was 13 years of age. But I really didn't know just who he was. I knew him as a savior, but I'm saying to really know him in the power of who he was and, and the realism of who he is. Now, you were raised in, uh, in a Christian environment. My mother was saved. My dad was not. And uh, um, you always went to church when you were younger? or Yes, I went to church uh, when I was younger. And, and I, I'd like to, you know, I'd like to throw in a, in a, a plug uh, for saved women who have uh, unsaved husbands. You can walk right before them, and God can do something special. Because even though my mother was saved and my dad was not saved, my father did not buck against us going to church and being involved in church. As a matter of fact, he encouraged it. Mm -hmm. And he used to take us to church, even so much so to we were at the church before they unlocked the church. Mm -hmm. My dad wanted us to be involved with what my mother was involved in. And uh, so therefore, I had that in my background. But when I turned 18 years of age, my mother passed. I had just turned 18 in February, and my mother died that same March. And uh, that was a devastating time for me. Because, you know, when you, you have parents and you love your mother, and you love your father, but it's just something about that mother. You have them there and you say, oh, I, I don't want you to die before I die. I would rather die before you, you die. But the Lord took my mother home when I was 18. And there were five of us kids at home and one was in the service. My oldest brother was in the service. And it came a situation that my dad absented himself from the home. And so that left me with four children to raise. How old were you? 18. 18. <laughs> and I, like I tell them sometimes, I said, I was just a children myself. <laughs> I was a child myself. And uh, I said, Lord, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. But I had been programmed all of that time I had been, my mother and father were programming me, you know, and through the word of God, through the home training, all of that programming me. But I wasn't thinking about for this reason, to learn how to cook, to know how to cook, to know how to sew and wash and iron and all of these things. But I didn't know 
all of this was coming down the line so fast. So my, my mom passed and my dad left. And so there we were, the children. And God enabled us to be real, you know. He, he enabled me, gave me strength, gave me the ability to be there, to be father and mother to those children. And I, I look back now and I say, God, how did we make it? And we were in a situation we had been evicted because I, had, I, didn't, I was just getting out of high school. I hadn't worked or anything, so I got a job and everything. And they had taken the children, and they gave the children back. I had been shot at. <laughs> uh, I, all of that going on, this is between the time I was 18 and 21 years of age. And I mean, it was just devastating. When you go from being a kept child at home with two parents to starting to become a parent yourself, you know, it wasn't like I had nine months advance notice that I was gonna have a child. And uh, believe you me, I, uh, I got four at once. <laughs> so and, so uh, what part did God play in, in your rearing these, uh, the, uh, this, this family? Uh, we, we uh, know today that virtually every one of those kids are in the ministry, aren't They're they? They're living for the Lord, yes. They're living for the living Lord. Living for the Lord. Working for the Lord somehow. Three of them are, three of them are uh, ministers of God. Uh-huh. My sister's married Your oldest to brother was, was pastor. Yes, and, is pastor. Uh, is pastor. That's Robert. That's Robert. And your youngest brother. Is Maurice. Uh, and... and uh, um, Oh my, well, I, I, my, well, I have uh, three brothers that are ministers of God. One is deceased. He was a minister of God. Yes, yes. Uh, my nephew was just ordained. Uh, my brother-in-law is a minister. He's an ordained elder in Richmond. So, so your influence upon their life had God in that influence, didn't it? Yes, in absolutely, church, absolutely. Serving God. Because uh, a lot of times they wanted, they wanted to do uh, what they wanted to do and to do a lot of what the world uh, would want them to do. But all I had, all I had to lean back on was that which I knew, and that was in the Word of God. That was the word of God. And so therefore, that's, those are the tapes that were playing in my head. And at one point, the reason I, I was, uh, at one point after my mother passed and I turned 18, I decided that I wanted, I wanted to do what I wanted to do. When I wanted they, to kids, go out and kids just. Kids were getting a little older. Yeah, right? and I wanted to get out and, and do what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I called myself going to walk away from the Lord and uh, I praise God. That's why I say I praise God for the word of God because the Holy Spirit just tugging at your heart, talking to your mind because I had a job to do and, and God had something planned for my life and the devil was trying to destroy the plan that God had for my life. I had children to raise and the devil didn't want me to do that but I had to raise them in the fear of God, mm -hmm. to, in, in the word of God. We put so many other things in, it, in children and we allow them to do whatever they want to do. Well, you just can't allow them to do whatever they want to do. And you know, Monday through Friday, I didn't ask them, are you going to school today? I didn't say, are you going to school? I said, get up, you're going to school. So why was I going to wait and on Sunday ask them, are you going to church today? Are you going to Sunday school today? Get up, we're going to Sunday school. We're going to church. Why would I leave, I wouldn't leave their secular education up to them. Why would I leave their Christian upbringing and education to them? I wouldn't do it. And so God just blessed me and just drew me back. Even when I was trying to pull away, 
because he had, a, he had a job for me to do. And then the Lord opened up a door through the Edwin Hawkins Singers. Mm -hmm. We weren't then called the Edwin Hawkins Singers. You were a church we were, choir, We were you? the Northern California State Youth Choir of the Churches of God in Christ. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was a part of the choir and uh, two of my brothers. And we, re we recorded the record not for the purpose of what happened to it. What we record was it? It was Oh Happy Day. That, and, and many people will remember that song was number one. Number one for, for a for, long time. It, and it sold, I think it was 13 million copies, hmm. uh, single copies. Uh, plus, uh, we had won a gold record for it, two Grammys, and various other awards. Mm -hmm. But when we recorded the record, we didn't record it for any fame or anything like that. We recorded it. Uh, to raise funds to go to the youth convention the next year. Mm -hmm. That was the only purpose and in it, recording it the record. A, it was a Christian song. It was a Christian song. I, I remember that song played uh, when I was younger uh, as, as a secular song, yeah. Oh Happy Day. Right. But it was, that was meant to reflect Christian uh, values. Absolutely, it? because it was from the uh, title album, Let Us Go Into the House of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's all we sang was gospel music. And people danced to it and, and, and it played on rock stations and everything. But the thing that, you know, I'm grateful about, they heard a message. Because when you say, oh, happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away, he taught me how to watch and pray and live rejoicing every day. That's a message in itself. That's right. That's, a, that's the gospel in a nutshell. And so for people to take it and for it to go worldwide, not just, you know, uh, throughout the United States, but worldwide, now, it was really something. That's remarkable. Uh, uh, the, the, you and the singers were, were on various shows and different things and met affluent people. What kind of people and what kind of shows? Well, we were on uh, Johnny Carson, Johnny Cash, uh, Dick Cavett, both in England and in uh, the United States and, and New York. Um, American Bandstand, of course. And uh, Dick Clark was still there. Right? Uh, yeah, Dick Clark he was, was still there. He was there for eternity, <laughs> wasn't he? Yeah. Dick Clark was still there. And uh, we were on uh, Hollywood Palace. Uh, you were really, the, most of the uh, major shows. We you were, were in the home of Barbara Streisand. Well, we did. Uh, we had a Christmas party up in uh, uh, Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, they had it in, it was in her suite that uh, we were there singing at Caesar's Palace with uh, uh, the Hawkins singers were singing at Caesar's Palace. I've sung in many places, believe me I have. It's unbelievable Ruth how that, uh, how that a Christian song with the intentions of talking about Jesus washing sins away could be in all these places <laughs> in, in, in Las Vegas and, and all these things. But, but you Tahoe. But you began to find what? You, you began to find that the environment was... The uh, environment, and, and not only uh, the environment, but people, they want you to compromise. Uh -huh. A lot of times people want you to compromise, and they wanted us a lot of times to sing things that did not pertain to Jesus. Uh -huh. They like you to sing things that took out uh, Jesus or God or the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost and say him or they or you know uh, so it could be used secular but I said gee isn't that interesting the song that made a hit was oh happy day when Jesus washed my sins away and that's why you were there uh, that's it? why we were there and then to say well we want you to sing something else and then you know they sort of wanted us to sing about trees and boats and things like that and uh -huh. eucalyptus trees and you know, I said, it would be kind of, it's kind of difficult to sing about something that I've never seen. I'd never seen a eucalyptus tree. So it was rather difficult to sing about. <laughs> and then they wanted you to sing love songs or romantic songs. They would and, want us to, but yeah. uh, the thing of it is, I felt that uh, personally for me, we had compromised enough and uh, so things it? weren't going well. So and this, so this, why, this is why the break. There was, there was a change. There was a break. And what, what happened? Well, 
we met, uh, you know, with, with Edwin Hawkins, and we talked. Uh, the record uh, producers and record companies wanted him to do some compromising. And uh, so we wouldn't be put in the position to do it. And business, uh, business was bad. Uh, management business was bad. So we decided but, but that we'd go up, back to work. You were giving, giving up a lot of money. Now, I mean, and there, fame, there's, there's and a, a lot of uh, things to be uh, had. Yeah, it is. It is. But there's also a lot of compromises and that people want you to make. In other words, uh, fame and fortune and these things that, that were really available to you, and really oh, you had yes. to some degree, uh, there was something of higher value here. Really? Because, well, see, I left my job with the government. I worked uh, for the Navy and still work for the Navy. Um, I left that job uh, for four years and I went on the road and that's exclusively what I did. That was mm -hmm. my living on the road, in and out of hotels and auditoriums. and. So you gave all that up Yeah. and went back to work for the for government? For the Navy, yes. For the uh -huh. Navy and that's right. where you work today? That's where I work so, today. So you're kind of saying, I think, at least this is the message I get, you'd rather be live modestly and I, I know that you make a modest salary and uh, your needs are met, but you'd rather live modestly and live for Jesus uncompromisingly yes. than to have fame and fortune. Oh, yeah. To, and, and knowing the, the quality of your music, Ruth, right. and uh, I, many people who are watching have heard you sing, and we have tapes that we play often of your music. You, you could have gone great and, and far things in the world of music, but you would rather live for Jesus. You would yeah. rather use your voice for Jesus. For Jesus, You'd Absolutely. rather not compromise. No, I won't. Have you, have you ever looked back, has the devil ever made you think, now look what you gave up? You know, uh, he would try to make me think about that, but I think about all the things that God has done for me. Yeah. All what, the what situations. What kind of things has he done? You were, you were ill when you were, were a little girl, and God raised you up. Yes. Tell, what happened? Well, my dad told me, see, because I didn't know. My dad told me that I was a sickly child uh, when I started out. I had also been scalded uh, on, I don't even know which side it's on now, because it, it's been years ago. I have to look at that when I go home. Uh, that I was playing in the kitchen of my grandmother's house, and my... Uh, Aunt was bringing a pail of water off the stove that she was boiling, and it spilled on me, and it burnt down. You know, it scalded me on one side, and I remained in the hospital. And I didn't know any of that. You know, my dad told me, but God, God took care of me. But also when I was 18, uh, after my mother died, my, my nerves were so bad. My nerves had gotten so bad, and I didn't know. My feet and legs swelled up so bad to the point where I couldn't walk. And uh, when they, that had happened, and I was being taken back and forth to the doctor every week, and, you know, that's in my records, uh, my medical records, and uh, I was tired of it. I was tired of it. I, I said, God, I'm tired of it. And I had just come back from the doctor and I was laying on the couch, and I had a new thing of medicine. And I said, Lord, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this. And so I said, Lord, I'm throwing this away. I'm throwing this medication away. And if you don't heal me, I'll never walk again. I threw it away. That week I walked. Praise God. And I've been walking ever since. Praise God. That was in 1963. So you knew the power of God. You knew what God had available. Yes. And you, so that's really the basis of why you didn't want to compromise, no. Ruth. You didn't, want no, to, no. you didn't want to be out of touch no. with a God no. that could do these things. No. The uh -uh. God that you loved. No. I, and, and I tell him, I said, I said you, you know how they say sometimes women are. I said, there are things that I want to know and only God can tell me. And, and I must see him. 
face to face in peace. I said, there are so many things that I want to know. Why did you love man so much that you would send your son to die for him? What are we that you would love us so? Who are we? You know, and, and then when I think about the ability that God gave me, uh, an ability to sing, I just look at it and said, Lord, how is it that we can just think it in our mind and it comes out across our vocal cords? And, there, and it's not like, you know, you're sitting down there playing the piano and you, if, if it can be played on the piano, a voice can imitate it mm -hmm. and produce it. And I said, God, who are we? And there are things that, those kind of things intrigued me. And the thing I, I just knew that God was always faithful to us to minister to our needs when we didn't have any food in our house. See, when, when you say God is faithful, God is faithful when there was no food in our house and we were down to nothing. And when I say nothing, I'm talking about not enough to make an air sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> mm, you got you. Uh, nothing. And so the Lord, the Lord, someone knocked on my door and said, the Lord put you on my heart to bring you this food and to bring you this money. It was just when I needed it. Praise God. When I was down to nothing. He always meets our need. Praise God. Always. The Lord promised in his word that he would meet our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And so, therefore, God has always been faithful to me. And so, how could I go out and prostitute the voice that God has given me, mm. singing something that I know nothing about? Praise God. But I can sing about the love of Jesus. And there are many people that want to hear it. I work with the follow-up prison ministries. I more or less say I sing to a captive audience. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I work in, in, in the jails. And, and to see the results of the ministry, the work in the ministry, uh, that's so important to me. And I still get to go out and, and do some singing. And uh, I, I really enjoy it. Uh, and I... Uh, I look to, uh, to record a record. I'm uh, working towards that end. And, uh, but I'm not about fame and fortune. I'm about getting a message out, a message of love, that Jesus loves us, that he died for us, that God sent his son to die for us, and that men don't have to die in sin when they're already forgiven. Praise God. They don't have to die. So therefore, I'm... Uh, I'm quite content. Praise God. I am. I'm quite content. And the Praise Lord has God. opened doors for me. And I do a lot of singing, as you know. Yes. <laughs> we, uh, so we appreciate <laughs> that singing. So well, I'm happy about it. Well, Ruth Ann, you know, I think that for those that are watching, we have to convey the fact that, ladies and gentlemen, here is a lady that, in her testimony to you, she has given up what many of us or many of you would consider the desires that everybody has, fame, fortune, uh, prominence. Uh, as we heard uh, uh, her story of, of success and being a part of uh, international fame and these sorts of things, but to her, Jesus was first and foremost that she could not compromise to lose touch with the Lord that raised her up when she, she hurt and needed healing as an 18-year-old girl. When there was no one else to turn to in the world, she had turned to God mm -hmm. as, as just a teenager, and God helped her to raise four children when her mother died. I know Ruth Lyons to be one of the most faithful, integrous people in our church. It's inspired me as a pastor so many, many times. But she knows the power of God is worth more than the riches of this world. God called Jesus the pearl of great price because in Jesus, Jesus can meet all of our needs. He can take our sins away and give us eternal life. He can heal us. What a person would do 
How much would they pay a doctor yes. if that doctor could cure them of cancer, mm -hmm. if that doctor could withdraw the infection of AIDS yes. or some other uh, notable or infamous disease? But Jesus has done that and does do that yes. when he brings into a person's life the forgiveness of their sins. He has cured the most incurable of all diseases, sin. 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 And he does heal the incurable diseases. I, I'm a, here as a witness of, of God healing me of, of mental turmoil and, and problems after years of drug abuse in my life. Jesus is invaluable. And there are people every day that are trading away Jesus because yes. of the pleasures of this world. They, they would rather they would rather absorb themselves in the things of this world. I'm here to encourage you this morning. Jesus Christ is worth more than anything in this world. Absolutely. He is worth giving your life for. Yes. He is worth devoting your time, your life, it, your energy for. And I want to invite you this morning, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, to trust your life to Jesus. He's worth more anything in this world. He's worth more than fame and fortune. He's worth more than all the riches this world has. He's worth more than anything there is. And I want you to know if you have turmoil, if you have problems, if you have burdens, if, if you're not at peace this morning, if you're hurting inside, if you're sick, if you're lonely, if you're lost, Jesus has that answer for you. And Jesus has his arms outstretched. He says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's why he came to this planet Earth, was to do that in your life. He says, whosoever will. He says the invitation is to, is to everyone. He wants you to come this morning. Do you know Jesus this morning? If you don't, would you pray with me right now? Right now, would you join with me and let's pray together? Say these words from your heart and mean them to God. Dear God, I, I come to you in Jesus' name. And I ask you to forgive me of my sins for Jesus' sake. I put my faith and trust in your Son who died for me on the cross 2,000 years ago, who shed his blood for my sins, that I, I could come to you and have fellowship, that I could come to you and have salvation. Dear God, I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior this day to serve Him, to live for you the rest of my life. And I thank you for forgiving me. I thank you for coming into my heart. I thank you for bringing the birth of your spirit in my heart this day.
Jesus.